Hey everybody, welcome back. Well, as you can see, we're on the road and we are headed to Michigan. Um, gotta pick up an item. I got a lighter duty trailer behind me, but uh, I gotta pick up an item, spend the night in the truck, and then drive straight back home. So it's about a 600 mile journey to where we're going. Right now we're about 115 miles outside of Chicago, still in Wisconsin, but uh, Let's keep on driving, put some road behind us, and we should be there by between 10.30 and 11 p.m. Eastern time tonight. So we'll see you guys there. Hey guys, well, we've made it, uh, we're within 50 miles of our destination. So we've gone through Wisconsin, Illinois, Indiana, and now we're in Michigan. So lower Michigan at that. Um, all this driving, I didn't even get to see Lake Michigan. <laughs> Maybe tomorrow morning when I wake up, I'll get to see a little bit of it, but I don't know if the interstate goes close enough to, to Lake Michigan to see it. But anyhow, um, we might be trying to load up this thing tonight. It's going to be, let's see, 1025 Eastern time when I get there. Uh, it shouldn't take much to get it loaded. So... You guys don't even really know what it is yet, but shouldn't take much to get it loaded. And then uh, we're going to go to bed in our beautiful accommodations back here. I actually enjoy camping in the back of this little SUV. It's kind of fun. So then when we wake up in the morning, it's head straight for home. So stay tuned. We're almost there. Well, good morning, everybody. We did make it to Michigan last night at about 10.30 Eastern time. And we loaded up the trailer, got the item we were there to pick up. And I decided to turn around and start heading for home because I didn't want to hit traffic in Chicago this morning. So I turned around and drove as far as I could. I made it to Janesville, Wisconsin, about 3.30 in the morning and that's where I slept um, pretty good ride uh, I'm not too <laughs> not too pleased with all of the tolls in Chicago and Illinois it's just it's ridiculous I think but I understand there's a reason for them and what they use them for but I paid there was one toll I paid almost $19 just to get through and you know I don't know how many tolls I went through several but anyway, we got what we came for, and uh, we'll do a big unveiling here and when we get back home. So we'll see you there. All right, guys. Well, we made it back home. We got everything unloaded. The vehicle's cleaned out, and it's time for the unveil. Here we go. We have a 1950 Farmall Cub. It does have the touch control system on it. Just walking around real quick. I don't know if you guys can see in there. Fuel tank is shiny clean. The engine turns freely. We got good snap from the impulse. We got a J4 magneto on it. It is still a six volt system. It came with the rear cultivator lift or lift arm uh, let's see serial number 113122 makes it a 1950 model not long after the suspected serial range of the uh, demonstrators one thing I do want to make note of is there is a an old repair here on the front of the engine block where it mounts to the front bolster there's a large braze it's pretty common for these to break in this area um, i was told that 
this thing leaks quite a bit, so I'm not sure if it's leaking from the braze or I was looking on top of the oil filter housing. If you guys can see that, there's a puddle of oil in there, and there should be a copper crush washer in here, if I remember correctly. I mean, I've never worked in a cub, but most of the oil filters have a copper crush washer underneath that. And if that uh, doesn't have one, that would account for why there's oil all over the side of the engine block, down here. I mean, it's, it's kind of wet everywhere over here, but oil will leach itself all over the place. I'm not sure about this repair, if it leaks or not. We'll find out when we get it started, but I did check to see if it has spark. We do have spark, so I'm going to leave the magneto on it for now. Um, eventually we'll take it over to Rudy's and, and we'll go through it, but we'll leave it on there for now because it does have spark. But something he did mention to me is the carburetor pours gasoline out of it. So my guess is there's either a, a sticky needle or a leaking float that isn't, you know, shutting off the fuel flow like it should be. Uh, looking at the fuel in the sediment bowl it's a little yellow but it's uh it's been sitting a little while i think he said it last ran a couple years ago looks like it's got auto light spark plugs in it so that's good um i mean everything looks pretty good just looking it over the tires um one of them on the rear here this one is brand new it's still got the the nubs on it this one here is Pretty good tread on it. A little weather checking, but not bad. The front tires, they're pretty weather checked, but they're pretty small and inexpensive, I think. So, well, you can even see the threads. <laughs> if you look look closely, you can see the threads poking through on this one. They're, these things feel like foam. They're so dry rotted. But anyways, uh, how did we come about this tractor? Well, one of our YouTube viewers, John, him and I have been kind of corresponding back and forth for a number of months now on this tractor and he had expressed to me that he wasn't sure if he had time to fix what needed to be fixed on this and was considering getting rid of it and kind of went back and forth with that decision for a while and I told him, well, if you ever do consider getting rid of it, I'm, I might be interested depending on, you know, what kind of price you want for it and you know, because I've always wanted to get Raylan a, a farm all cub or a Super A, and a cub is ideal for how old she is right now because this is, she's a very petite little girl, and this is even big for her, but she'll grow into it. So um, John had mentioned to me that he had gotten it from his father, and his father had got it in the mid-1970s. John's had it for, I think he said, six to six to eight years something like that so it's just been sitting in his garage he hasn't done much with it and uh it just it was time for him to kind of let go of it so you know we we corresponded back and forth for a while and and he was very kind in his offer and you know it was something that i i made happen based on just being the right time. So I had some time off of work and we flew out to Michigan, picked it up and flew back. We did 1200 miles in you know, 24 hours. I left here at about one o'clock yesterday afternoon and it's now one o'clock in the afternoon today. So we just got home at about 12.45, 12.50. So here we are. The Cub is uh, home and it looks good. We'll get the carburetor off of it and then uh, we'll take that over to Rudy's and have a look-see at it and hopefully we can figure out what's wrong with it. I'm gonna, I'm gonna take it off here and just pull it apart and see if I can figure it out. Maybe, you never know, maybe we can drive this thing around today. We'll see. See you guys in the next one. <laughs> and you thought I was gonna leave you like that without, without messing with it, come on. Okay, so. I think I got the carburetor leaking issue figured out. I don't think it's a float issue at all. 
these carburetors on these cubs, they're made out of just pot metal. And a lot of times, I'm gonna try and show you guys here real close, but a lot of times these bolt holes or the screw holes where these, these two halves attach the bolt to the throttle body, they'll, they'll deform and they'll pull down in these areas and then they'll cause these corners to kind of lift up. So I took a picture holding this together. I took a picture before. And now after, it's not perfect, but it's a lot better than it was. So I tried to straighten this out as best I could because this was actually dished like this, this portion here. And then all three of these holes were pulled down so I filed the surfaces, if you guys can see here, I filed this surface, I filed this surface, and I filed this surface to try to make them as flat as possible all the way around. So, and while I had it apart, I sprayed everything out with carb cleaner. There was a lot of varnished gas in there. So let's see if we can get it back together and maybe get it running. Okay, well, we got spark, we got fresh fuel cleaned out the carburetor, filed those surfaces. I put a copper crush washer on the air cleaner, the air cleaner, the <laughs> oil filter. We got spark, let's see what happens. Maybe half throttle, maybe choke. Nothing. Helps if you turn the ignition switch on. Bet you it's flooded now. Oh yeah, it's dripping. Oil pressure, that oil pressure. We got a little bit of a leak at that copper crush washer. See if that changes it at all. Let's see how it drives. I can put my rain cap over here. I'm pretty impressed with that. Sediment bowl's got a little bit of a drip. We'll have to fix that, but let's see what happens here. Not sure where to stick you guys on this thing. Reverse? Do we got reverse? We sure do. We got first gear. Huh. 
will all be dipped. It works. Huh. I do see a little bit of a drip of coolant, but I'm not sure if it's coming from the overflow tube. That's not coming out anymore, so maybe just a little bit too much in there. Really smoking at all. Still got good oil pressure. Huh. Well, now I can see we got coolant. Oh yeah, it is coming out of the overflow. Maybe we just got too much coolant in it. Let's see if we got second gear. if I can go around my fire pit with this. Oh yeah, like nothing. got third gear.
have it. That thing is spitting out a lot of coolant. I must have really overfilled it. Got some bearing noise in the rear end, probably in one of the final drives, or both. Not bad. Well, that's gonna do it. It runs. A little bit of cleaning and kind of attention to tending to some leaks and things that were missed. And good looking machine, good running machine. I don't hear any major noises. Maybe a little bit of a lifter noise, but. Yeah, I can see the, the oil puddling up on top of there. But it's not, uh, not getting overly full, so I would say that that crush washer is just seeping a little bit. It runs, though. It runs really well. Well, I can't say thanks enough to John and his wife for, you know, working this out for me. And my daughter's going to be extremely, extremely happy. So we're going to get a first reaction when she first sees it. But uh, that'll have to be next time. So thanks for watching, guys. Thanks for wrenching with me. It's a runner. Runs good. We'll see you guys in the next one.